to our I'm gonna say good morning to our Facebook our Facebook friends. Good morning and welcome to Interfaith Truth Center, where people of all beliefs can come together in an atmosphere of love and peace and unity. And we're happy to have everybody with us here in person, and we also like to welcome our Facebook family and friends. I'm Jean Aaron, and it is always my pleasure and honor, and I'm humble honor, uh, pleasure to to be, to you know, to serve my family here at ITC Interfaith Truth Center here in Austell, Georgia, on Austell Austell Road in Austell, Georgia, U.S. of A. And we'd like to invite you to come out. We are we are a um, metaphysical center, a gift gift store, and a center as well. We provide workshops and seminars and classes and sessions and all types of spiritual services to the community here in Cobb County and West Cobb. So welcome this morning. And today's, my topic this morning, I'm going to talk about, well, it's February. February is my, one of my favorite months next to Christmas, December and the holiday months. And one of the reasons is because it's my birthday month, my birth month. And it's a short month, so I get away with celebrating the whole month. You know, 28 days. I do it all, all, all month. So, but that's not, you know, that's not the only reason that it's special to me. It's because it's, it's love month. It's considered the love month. Love month. We get to celebrate. We get to pay special attention and special demonstration and special expressions of love to our loved ones. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. So at, this is actually my, my love message for 2022. I come, I'm here on the fourth Sunday every month and I'm glad that I had an opportunity to get that, get my love message in for the month. And I'm not gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about love and we're not gonna be talking about just plain old, a plain old love that, you know, that we kind of elude to in our daily walk and walks in, in and about with each other. But we're gonna be talking about unconditional love. Unconditional love. And that's the love that knows no measure. That's that unlimited, limitless, boundless love that knows no method, no, no, no boundaries. So the title of my message again to this morning is The Unconditional Love, The Love That Knows No Better. Now, we all know that love is our birthright. It's our birthright. No judgment, no condemnation, and there's nothing that we can do or need to do to earn it. It's just ours. And likewise, there's nothing that we can do or not do to lose it. It's ours. It's yours, it's mine, it is ours, and it's going to always be. Nothing gonna stop it. And ain't nothing you can do about it. All right? That's why I always say, I'm gonna love you and nothing you can do about it. But anyway, our life, well, it's because we are love, basically. We are love, and it's our birthright. Love is our life. The source of our life is love. Pure, simple love. We are love. And if I want to put it in another concise way, I might say that you un Unconditional love is love that does not depend on the attitude or the action of the beloved. Right? Like, like I say, I can, I'm going to love you and there's nothing you can do about it. So this morning what I want to do is I want to share first what unconditional love is in my perspective. And I'm hoping that you will open your your hearts and minds and and hear, at least hear what I'm saying. I'm not trying to try to make you a believer like me, but I want you to I want you to hear me out. And hopefully something will resonate with you and move you to, you know, to kind of go, yeah, I am love. And you can spread it, play it forward, and share it, share, share it with somebody. Because it's still you still got another day. You still got the rest of your life, in fact. And the second thing I want to do is I want to discuss why we so desperately need love. You've heard the old saying, the old song that goes, what the world needs now is love. 
I want to talk about, but I want to kind of talk about why this world and why we as individual beings so desperately need love. And not just love, but unconditional love. We play at love. We have a love of, we have a, a semblance of love that we, that we, um, <laughs> that we operate in most of the time. And so I, the third thing I want to, that, that's something else I want to make sure that we compare and understand the difference between when we say I love you as opposed to say I unconditionally love you. It's a difference. All right, and we're going to talk about that. And the last thing I want to do is I want to give you a few suggestions on how we can practice. <laughs> practice makes perfect. We can practice demonstrating and experiencing unconditional love. So let me start by reemphasizing that unconditional love can neither be earned or lost. And unconditional love is so vastly different from the love that we use that we're used to receiving and and also experiencing and giving back and forth to each other. And for most of us, we don't really know truly know what unconditional love truly is and what it really feels like and what it can do for us and do for our lives. A lot of, you know, we hit and miss at it. We do. We hit and miss at it. You know, I'm, I'm one of them too. We hit and miss at it. So what I want to do, is, instead of, well, most of the, most of, most of us these days, what we consider, what we consider true unconditional love it's, that's not exactly what we're practicing. Instead, what most of us call and consider love, or we express as love and experience as love, is actually just a kind of a form of infatuation, maybe, lust, inf infinity, mm, affection, codependency, egotistical neediness. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at myself in this camera, so I'm looking at myself too. <laughs> We all, we all experience love in those terms most of the time, unfortunately. But today I want to talk about the difference between what we, from day to day practice, as opposed to unconditional, the true unconditional love. True unconditional love is rare extremely rare, unfortunately, and it's immensely precious. It's, it is as precious as you are precious. It is the very life of you. It's the source of your life. We don't often think of it in that way, but we are love. True unconditional love, again, is unmistakable. When you really experience un conditional love <laughs> the very moment you experience it this is what happens to you you immediately come feel completely accepted you feel completely seen and noticed you feel hmm, you feel like you're understood you feel completely forgiven you feel completely loved. And it's a rare feeling. Because that's what we all yearn for, we hunger for, to be accepted. Not to have to go fix ourselves up to come back to be accepted. Or lose a few pounds. Or change, or, 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 or have to negotiate our race and creeds and sex. We want to come as we are and be accepted seen, recognized, understood, forgiven if necessary, and just loved. And when we feel that, when we feel that, all of that, we've experienced unconditional love. And you cannot ever mistake it from, I need you to love me. Or if you love me, I will love you back. Or if you do this, I, you know, let me talk a little bit about that. This is, a, this is actually a quote by a, a poet by the name of Mike, Mark Nepo. And I loved, loved, loved this so much that I wanted to share it with you. Now, this is what he said. 
He said, unconditional love is not so much about how we receive and endure each other as it is about the deep vow, listen, the deep vow to never, under any condition, stop bringing the flawed truth of who we are to each other. Heavy, isn't it? That we don't stop. We don't say, well, let me go fix myself up. Go get a degree. Finish high school. Get married. Have a perfect family. No. We bring ourselves broken, torn, worn out, ugly, stinking, whatever. And we present ourselves to one another. And in love. And in hope that, that we will be received in that same love. Unconditional love is essentially, it means loving someone or something without expectation or conditions. No matter what another person say or do or don't say or don't do, feel, think, act, believe, we still love. We're still going to love them. Unconditional love also applies to not only just human beings, but it applies to every living thing, every living creature, every animal, all of nature that's alive and was created by a source. Because the presence of source is part of all of that, all of that that's living. And that source again is love. The more we ab were able to to love ourselves and this is one one thing that we have to we need to probably look at and start with you cannot love any anyone else or anyone any other person more beyond the love that you can love for yourself all right, all right. so that's the first love that's the first starting point there's no there's more the more we are able to love ourselves unconditionally without losing weight, without going to get a degree, without joining the, the right fraternities and, the, and you're in the right club and the right neighborhoods and got the right, you know, none of that. Just loving yourself just like you are. The more we can do that, the more we are equipped to love others like we are loved. We recognize those words by none other than Jesus the Christ himself. He says, Love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love yourself, well, however you're loving yourself, that's how you're going to love your neighbor. And I think, uh, you know, other enlightened masters, ascended masters like Lao, he would, he would say things like, when you accept yourself, the whole world accepts you. When you accept you, the whole world accepts you. Unconditional. Unconditional love. Now, if you accept yourself with conditions, then guess what? The world's going to accept you with those, those same conditions. And then so. On the other hand, or on the other side of the coin, the love coin, if you would, is conditioned love. Or that love that comes with strings attached, hooks. Let's talk a little bit about that. So comparing a sh or sharing the difference between these two loves, they're totally very, they're totally distinct, totally different. You express conditioned love a certain way, and you express unconditional love a certain way. Never the two shall meet. I can't love you conditionally, unconditionally at the same time. I can't un I love you unconditionally and conditioned with conditions at the same time either, right? Unlike unconditional love, l l conditioned love doesn't, it's, hmm, it's what a lot of people mis mistake for true love, but it comes from ego. It comes from the mind. It comes from the mind. But the unconditional love, it comes straight from the heart. It's that connection, that, that extension of, Source himself, the source itself, God, creation, the great I am, whatever it is that you call your source and your creator, your I amness, that great I am, that's the extension of that source. 
So unlike unconditional love, conditional love has to be earned. And by God, you can lose it in a flash. In a flash. When this false form of love that we have to earn, <laughs> when, we, when, when, when we use this, when, this false, when we have to earn it, then it's respect and affection and kindness. Those are some, some, of the, some of the few conditions that we put on that love, right? I love you, then, you know, I'm going to be affectionate with, to you. And I love you, I'm going to respect you. I love you, and I'm going to be kind. This is going to be given, you know, because I'm earning it. While on the other hand, with unconditional love, you don't have to be kind to me. You don't even have to respect me. You can throw rocks at me. You can throw rotten tomatoes at me. You can, you know, diss me. But my love going out, it's uncondition unconditionally loving you, is not going to stop. It's not going to... I'm not going to put that condition on it. We easily apply this equation when we talk about conditioned love. And this is an equation. And by the way, love is not a formula, but this is the formula that we use. <laughs> this is the formula that we use. You know, an equation has do this and this and equals that, right? So this, and, and we're all guilty. I'm guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. I have thought these things and felt these things and wondered these things and used these conditions probably most of my life. The condition, you've heard the condition, I will love you only if. We might not openly say it. We usually go unspoken, unspoken conditions, but conditions nonetheless. Conditions, conditional love is inherently selfish and egotistical. Self-centered. Conditional love only lasts as long as certain unspoken rules are honored or recognized or maintained or met. I'm going to rattle off some of them to you. You've heard some of them too. You probably know some too. And these are just a few. I will love you only if you make me feel good about myself. I love you if you maintain, if you keep looking good. I don't, you know, don't be changing the looks on me. I'm not going to love you no more. I'm going to love, I will love you if you are successful and popular. I want, you know, I like to have a, I like to have a nice, strong man on my arm when I'm walking around and he's looking good so all the other ladies will be all like, look at Jane, she's got, you know. Or, I'm going to love you if you have a good job and you earn a, you know, have a good, have a good job, have a good pay, you know, you get the right, you know, got to be living in the right neighborhood. I will love you if you do what I say. You do what I say, I love you. I will love you if you believe like me. You got to believe like I do. Got to go to the same places that I go and believe the, the way I do. And you know, if you don't believe like I do, well, we can just talk about that. I will love you as long as you're supporting, supporting my bad habits. I don't want to change. Why do I have to change? They're bad habits. I know they're not any good, but as long as I can keep them and you're okay with it, we're, we're okay. I will love you if you give me money and things to make me look and feel good. I will love you if you approve of my decisions. I wanted, I decided to do this. And if you approve of it, you've got my love. I will love you if you behave right. If you, now, if you don't behave, little Johnny, I, you want mommy to love you, right? No, we don't, we don't. That's conditioned love. How about this one? He must not love me because he won't give up. He won't give any, give up this whatever for me. Give up his football day for me. So if you love me, you'll sacrifice. You make sacrifices. If you love me, you might, you know, you'll abandon your dreams and let's do this thing together. But this is the best one. I will love you if you love me first. Conditions. We don't have to speak them. We don't even have to tell anybody that, but we can act like it. We can demonstrate our love for them, hold back our love for, for whomever with these unspoken conditions. And, we, and I'm guilty. Hey, I've seen some of them like, you know, if he loved me, if he cared about me, if, these, if my children cared, if they really cared, they would, you know, remember me on my birthday. 
or whatever. <laughs> I just thought about that too. <laughs> they did remember me, by the way. <laughs> anyway, but if you think about it, if you think about the conditions and you think about if we put those conditions on each other in order to gain, to, you know, to, to confirm that, they, that we're loved or to, to send love back the other way, we're just simply setting ourselves up for failure, right? Because there's no way and on this side of heaven, that some, any, not any, not, not any of us can maintain all of these conditions all of the time. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, you know, going to, to the shopping with you today. Well, if you did, you would love, if, I, if, if you love me, you would, no, I don't feel like it. But that doesn't mean I don't love you because I, but, so we get disappointed. We get disappointed when we can't, these, the conditions aren't met and, and lived up to. And we, we withhold love back sometimes. We get this attitude and act all ugly. And we might tell them, I don't love you. I don't care. We might say that. And if we don't say it, we act like it. They can tell. <laughs> Read between the lines. So many of us experience this shallow kind of conditioned love. That's what we call it. That's what we call love today. And I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir and I'm one of the I'm, I'm in the front row. Can't sing, but I'm in the front row. <laughs> I am guilty of that. I look for you to love me back. And when you don't, I get feeling some kind of way. I might not be upset with you or whatever, but I'm disappointed. My joy's been stolen or messed with. So let's think about that. Let's think about it. Just think about it a bit. And let's be honest and face the fact that we do. This is what we call love. But that's not the love. That's the unconditional love. That's not the love that you are. That's not your being. Right? None of us are perfect. No matter not any stretch of the imagination. I just decided this morning. <laughs> and I, I wrote it down. I am no longer striving for perfection. That's a waste of effort and time. Because it ain't going to happen but I will do the best that I know to do. And besides that, hey, when I was created, God said I was good. And if God said I'm good, why not strive to be perfect? We keep good is not good and good is good enough for God. <laughs> y'all, y'all have to deal with my goodness. <laughs> we need to learn that. That's one thing we need to understand. We're good enough. Don't waste your time trying to be perfect because it ain't happen. It's not. You want to be nice to be, but it's not going to be. It's not humanly possible. So what the world needs now is unconditional love. So why do we so desperately need unconditional love in this world, in this day and time? I know. You guys know the answer. I don't have to tell you why because we're looking. Look at the world that we're living in. Look at the world that we have created. Look at the world that we have manifested. Because we've conditioned everything that we, we got this formula for love that we can't maintain. And we've got, we're wreaking havoc all over the place. Ukraine, White House, Blue House, Black House, Green House, all downtown, uptown, wherever. You're going to find it. You're going to find the result, the evidence of conditioned love. That's what we look, that's what we see. Because that's how we love. Unconditional love is at the very heart of who or what we are searching for. What we want as human beings. That's what we, so that's, that, if, some, if, you, if you ask, what is it, I mean, I feel like I'm looking for something. I'm look, what you're looking for is love, unconditional love. Because we've got the semblance of love that's not it. And your soul, your being, knows it. Knows that. It knows it. Your intuition, your, your, your I amness. It knows that. This, is, this ain't the real deal, Jean. Hmm. Studies show that without love and affection, babies develop severe cognitive and emotional, psychological dysfunctions. And... A lot of times, if they're not love, if they're not given love, they die. 
Not only is unconditional love necessary for our physical and emotional and psychological health, but it's also vital for our spiritual well-being as well. Without knowing or ha how to access the deep wellspring of love, unconditional love that resides on the inside of it within us, we settle for the conditioned one from the outside, from people, from relationships, from family members, from, from spouses, boyfriends, whatever, things, jobs, careers. That, and then we get those and we wonder why we're not still happy. Because the real love that will satisfy your soul, that will make, that will complete you, will fulfill you to overflowing, is inside of you. Not out here. It's inside of you. So the sad thing is that most people aren't even aware of that truth. We should become aware of it and help somebody else and tell somebody else about it. We tend to believe that love is always found outside and it's not. It is our, it, it's not, it's inside us. It is imperative that we learn to access unconditionally. Like we wanna see a change in the world that we live in. We wanna see, we wanna find that joy and that wellspring of, of joy that overflows in our lives continually. Then we need to go inside and find it. It's imperative that we find it, that we access unconditional love. Because without it, we'll eventually wither away. We can see it happening in Ukraine. You can see it happening in, in you know, third world countries. We can see it happening right here in this country, right here in this neighborhood, right, sometimes right in your families. You can see it. This desperation can lead to doomed relationships, you know, just self-sabotaging yourself, trying to seek happiness in, in all the wrong places. Unconditional love is the only thing in the entire universe that can truly, truly help us experience joy, freedom, acceptance, peace that, that will quiet the longing that deep and that longing that we have inside of us. Again, unconditional love doesn't have to be earned or proven. It's timeless, it's endless. It has no conditions, it's not a formula. It's not do this to, that, to get that. If you want to learn how to experience unconditional love, I'm sorry to tell you, you're gonna have to reprogram yourself. You're gonna have to reprogram, you have to start rewiring your conditioned habits to unconditioned habits. I did a talk the other day about conditioned, uh, conditioned as opposed to un uh, unconditioned. And we all are conditioned because when we get into, world, into the world, we come here totally unconditioned. But in order to function, and to be mobile and to operate in this world, we have to be conditioned and taught how to operate, even as a baby. Remember the very first thing you, you teach a baby how to be a part of the family with conditions. This is a thing that they have to do. And that's okay, I'm not saying that we don't need conditions, but we also need to understand that there's a part of us that is beyond condition. And that internal part of you, it has no part of, it has no part of conditioning, okay? What it will do, it will just withdraw itself like a little broken baby child, broken child, and stay hovered in the corner because it will not, it will not love in measured. It will not love conditionally. It would rather just sit dormant and quiet and watch you physically wither away. Or destroy yourself, or destroy each other. And that's what we do. Anyway, guilty as charged. And I'm making, an, I'm making a pact that I'm stop striving for perfection. And instead, I'm going to start rewiring my conditioned love habits. All right? If you ever hear me say to you, if you really love me, Cece, you would do such and such for me. Spank my hand. 
<laughs> and if I hear you say that, I'll say the same thing. I'll say, okay, I'm going to love you anyway. <laughs> Remind me of that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give you, I want to give you some, just a few suggestions that, that how you could practice this. Because it takes practice, you know. You know, it took, it took, it took that baby a, a, few, a, a while to learn how to talk and walk and do all that thing. So you're going to retrain yourself again. So these are some things that you can do. They're self-explanatory. However, if you, if you need more explanation of them, give me a call. I'd love to sit down and talk to you about them and uh, see, you know, how you could actually put them into practice. They're real simple. Number one, these are suggestions for how you can practice to practice rewiring your conditioned habits, of love habits. And, and go, I'm going unconditional. Oh. <laughs> Number one, whenever you, whenever you experience an emotion that you dislike, embrace it. Don't push it away. Embrace it. All right? Practice mindfulness. Number two, practice mindfulness and connecting to your body. Like we did this morning. We sat down and we had a meditation. And, and Ms. Norma told us how to breathe. You know? You can live without food. You can live without water for a but you can't live without breath. So breathe. So sit down and observe your breathing. Observe your body. Get from, connect. See the, understand and, and relate to the connection. Number three, embrace your, here's a good one. This is going to be an easy one. I know a lot of us like to do this, and I'm going to have to talk to you about this one. Embrace your negative thoughts and habits. Now, I don't say, I don't understand, you know, you know, just embrace them, hug them, give them a hug. Let them go. <laughs> don't don't hold on to them too long, but embrace them. Learn from them, and then release them. Don't get on the phone. Talk to your friends about them for two weeks, because then they'll become. Number four. Ask yourself: Am I putting conditions on my relationship with my children, with my husband, with my boss, with my my friends, with my neighbors? And and if you are, forgive yourself. And do redo it. Go back and, you know, I, when I was a little girl, my grandmother would make us, when we did something that we weren't supposed to do, we had to find seven things to, to counteract it by doing it. So practice doing it without condition. Practice loving without condition. I'm going to love you. I don't, I'm going to love you whether you 10 pounds overweight or you whatever. You wreck the car. I'm still going to love you. Give something to someone without wanting anything in return. Practice giving and don't look back. Give it, play it forward. Don't even look back and don't expect it back. Mm -hmm. Become conscious of triggers that cause you to shut off. You know, now that's a, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. You know, my daughter, she got upset with me the other day. She put me on, blocked, blocked my calls. Now, that's what, tell me that wasn't the trigger. <laughs> I wanted to get in the car and go find her. But, you know, but I didn't shut up. You know what? I just said, oh, cool. I just texted her again. I said, when this unblock, maybe it'll get to her. <laughs> when I get around to it, I go to her house and give her peace of my mind. But, you know, it's good. Number, number eight, and this is the last one. And this is the most important one. This is probably should have been number one. Practice loving. Oh, no, I got one more. Practice loving yourself and others exactly like they are. Don't use a formula. Don't put a formula on it. Don't put if this and that, that, no. Love regardless. And that's the number, now the last one would be forgive others and forgive yourself. Be quick to forgive. Someone do anything, somebody triggers you, you recognize that trigger, forgive them or let it go, release it. All right. Unconditional love means embracing all of the nice, the nasty, the ugly about yourself and everybody else. Remember that no one is perfect. Don't even try to be. It's just know that you're good enough. Life is a constant journey of growth. Don't love others based on what they look like, talk like, act like. No. Love every, love them in the moment for whatever is going on. Love them anyway. And make this, make this a mantra. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Unconditional love is absolute. 
acceptance, and one openness to yourself and others. It is the most powerful force in the universe. There is no better love than unconditional love. And the unconditional love is love that knows no better. Knows no better. Thank you. That's all I have for you this morning. And now remember that love, unconditional love is love without measure. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks.